What's up everybody, AJ Hartman here with RHR Performance. Today we're gonna to do a quick video on splitter tunnels, what they are, how they work. So first thing we're gonna to have to do is get a little familiar with Bernoulli's principle. Bernoulli's principle states that as air is a lower speed or a lower velocity across the surface, the pressure increases, you get higher pressure. As air velocity increases, you get a lower pressure across the area. So as you can see, area one right here, you got all this volume, so the air is moving a little bit slower, you get a higher pressure in this area. As it gets squeezed down in area two, this, the velocity will increase, giving you a low pressure zone in this area. So to take it a step further, what we're gonna do is pretty much draw a line right here down the center of it get rid of this portion of it and act as if this is the ground so now you have air entering it'll speed up through the bottom right here and then get diffused out to where there's more volume and it slows down again so what we have here basically is the beginnings of a splitter for a car so let's get rid of some of this extra up front. And off of here, you have the bumper going up to the window. You have the fender opening. And you have a wheel, usually right around here, your spokes. And then this will be your splitter. So Bernoulli's principle, remember, told us as air speeds up, the pressure decreases. So on a regular flat splitter, you'll have some high pressure right here. You'll get a little bit of a low pressure underneath. But once you add a front diffuser and you now all of a sudden have this extra volume under here, more air is gonna to wanna to get drawn up and in to this front splitter tunnel or front diffuser. What that does is speed up the air going underneath of the splitter, increasing the pressure drop, creating the extra downforce. It's easy to see in this CFD picture, the additional low pressure zone at the throat or the entrance going into the tunnels. It's also worth noting the extra low pressure zone along the leading edge of the splitter. Even though the tunnels are about midway back on the splitter, the extra air drawn across the splitter blade creates a slightly lower pressure across the entire surface area. It's not much, but that little bit over that much surface area can really add up. Now it's also worth noting that once the air gets drawn under the splitter, it has to go somewhere. As you can see, the wheel is here. You got, you'll have suspension components, engine, all that stuff. That's why a lot of times you'll see race cars with some sort of you know, tire relief to let this air back out. You'll see some sort of like louvers up here as, as the air hits the tire, makes its way up and you get high pressure under the fender, the air can then come out of the fender louvers as well. So here we have just a general top down view of a splitter. Here's your tire, you'll have suspension components back here going to the chassis let's say you do a, a tunnel about here running straight in <clears throat> the low pressure zone wants to happen around this area the vortices we were talking about earlier want to come in and travel down the sides of the tunnel and also like mentioned earlier if you have to do a tunnel in front of the tire, you're limited on space, or you want the extra downforce, you would want some sort of curved setup. The nice thing about the curved setup, if this edge of the tunnel, let's say your tire was right about here, coming out, this vortice you would want to come off, run down the side of the tire, because the tire itself will get what's called tire squirt where the air wants to kind of shoot around the tire, like that. So a curved tunnel, again, 
the vortice will follow the curve of the tunnel and go off to the side face of the tire. The other thing I was talking about was since you have a low pressure zone created in your tunnels, air is going to want to kind of come in at an angle almost and kind of converge into the tunnels. So one trick you can do to help work the outer tunnel harder is add some sort of end plate on the side of your splitter like mentioned earlier. What the end plate does is it'll build up more high pressure on the top but underneath it creates an extra low pressure zone underneath the edge of the splitter. That again works the splitter harder but it also creates a little less of a want for air to go to the extra low pressure zone created by the tunnel. So rather than having air slip on your splitter and enter you know, somewhere around here, it'll want to pull more through the throat of the tunnel, again working the tunnel harder. In this pressure slice you can see how the end plate causes a high pressure zone on top as well as creating the additional low pressure zone under the edge of the splitter. I want to give a huge thank you to Kyle at JKF Aero. If anybody has any interest in aerodynamic videos, please check out Kyle Drives or Kyle Engineers. I'll put a link in the description below to his channel. Um, while we were working with him to develop splitter tunnels, end plates, uh, a handful of other aerodynamic bits, dual element wings that'll be coming out soon. Um, he was hired by a Formula One team, so we can no longer work with him, but it is pretty cool. It's also very general information. Each vehicle is going to be a different shape, work slightly differently, um, but this is the general outline of how aerodynamics will work with splitter tunnels, end plates, stuff like that. So any questions, please let me know. Um, put a question down in the comments below. I'll try and answer them as best as I can. There you guys have it. Hopefully you found that information useful. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and drop a link in the description below to some of our universal aero parts, such as our fender louvers, our three different sizes of splitter tunnels. Um, if you haven't already, please subscribe. We're gonna be doing more videos like this, so that way you can stay up to date with everything we release. Thanks.